The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner. A uh, label change by federal regulators limited access to crop protection products containing Lambda Psi for the 2023 growing season. And so on this episode of uh, the Canola School, we're going to uh, take a look ahead at uh, 2024, get an update on where things are at and uh, strategies that uh, canola producers can take when it comes to uh, managing insect pests such as flea beetles or grasshoppers. We're pleased to be joined now by Ian Epp, agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. And uh, Ian, when it comes to this Lambda Psi file, I know you've been uh, kind of the, the point person for the Canola Council on it. Where are we at with the use and access to Lambda Psi products for the 2024 growing season? Unfortunately, we are exactly where we were at this time last year or leading into the 23 growing season, which is not where we want it to be. But that label change that officially took a place April 29th of last year is still holding and we've had no no real progress. We continue to work at it where we're, you know, we're, we're engaged with the regulator. We bring this up at a whole pile, highlighting the importance to growers and how this resolution just doesn't, this doesn't work for Western Canadian growers. But at this point, we, we have no changes. We've had no changes. And uh, I don't think we really expect a change prior to the beginning of the 2024 growing season. So, so just to clarify, this label change eliminated the approval for the use of Lambda Psi products on crops or, or even crop byproducts that could end up in, in animal feed. That's, that was the, the change that took effect last year, correct? Yeah, so that, that is the change. A grower can apply it to something for food production, but we know in Western Canada that we don't segregate food and feed in some products. And in canola, actually, simultaneously, your canola that you deliver is both food and feed in the meal and oil. Um, so in that front, it doesn't, it just doesn't quite work for Western Canada, or it doesn't make sense in a Western Canadian perspective. Um, so in a similar way, that really it means that Lambda Psi, we don't really recommend you use it. You can legally apply it to canola, but you'd have to have, in order for that to kind of work through the value chain, you'd have to have assurances from your buyer that that canola is destined for only the food market or only a market that fits that bill. And you know, it never hurts to check with your grain buyer to ask questions. And maybe, maybe there are a few instances where that that happens, but the vast majority of cases, the canola that, that is going to any of our crushers, exporters, a lot of, in a lot of the cases, it's food and feed. And, you know, we do have other products available. So that's really the safest option for growers. So, so speaking of other products, this is uh, another growing season then that we're heading into without one of the, the main tools in the toolbox, basically going in, shorthanded in, in some ways when it comes to uh, managing insect pests versus the scenario or the tools that we had a few years ago? Yeah, this has been a fairly important tool for us uh, for the last number of years, kind of a key tool for managing insects in canola. Uh, the good news is there are a number of other products that have similar efficacy, similar, they, they'll fit the bill. There are other tools for farmers to use. Uh, and, you know, as we saw last year, you know, companies, the supply chain, there's products available for growers. They'll be on the shelves ready for growers to use if they need it. You know, nobody plans to use a foliar insecticide, but we know that there will be pests this year. Last year was a slower on flea beetles. This year, we don't really predict flea beetles, but I'm not sure. The flea beetles are always overall the number one pest in canola. The probably that we see the most acres dealing with flea beetles. And we know across Western Canada that grasshoppers uh, are primed that they could have a big year. Again, subject to spring and the moisture, and you know maybe that will evaporate. Hopefully that doesn't come to fruition, but we know that there is the potential for a bad grasshopper year uh, this year across a good chunk of the prairie. So you know, one of those things to be keeping in mind on which pests you might be applying an insecticide for and you know, keeping in stock of what you have in the shed, what products are available. And possibly if you're, you know, you maybe you will spray for flea beetles and grasshoppers, or some growers probably will somewhere on the prairies, Looking at what the options are and what the from a keep it clean perspective, making that export ready, you know, what how many times can you apply a product or which product maybe should you use first as an insecticide and then maybe follow up if you do need a second application. Um, now as uh, the snow is kind of on the ground but leaving quickly is kind of make those plans and kind of strategize how you want to approach insect control for the for the 2024 growing season. Yeah, more of a, a strategic approach. 
Yeah, especially when you're balancing multiple products that have overlapping labels, um, some label restrictions on times of application, and possi the possibility of multiple pests throughout the growing season. You know, hopefully that doesn't come, but we are, there's always some growers that have to apply more than one full year application in a growing season. All right. Well, thanks for the update and uh, the insight again as we look ahead to uh, this upcoming growing season. Like you said, hopefully grasshoppers, flea beetles aren't something that we're too concerned about. But uh, just in case, thanks for uh, joining us uh, for this episode of the Canola School again, Ian. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity.